Hi, welcome back to the Camtasia vs. ScreenFlow Smackdown Part 3. Round 5. Annotations. First up, Camtasia. If we look under the Annotations category, we can see that Camtasia organizes the annotations into six different tabs. Let's take a look at the first tab, which are text bubbles and boxes. Let's drop the exploding shape onto our demo. The minute we do this, we can see it on top of our demo video, as well as on the timeline in its own video track. And a settings dialog pops up so that we can configure it. Let's set an appropriate font and give it a bit of a shadow so it has a 3D effect. We can just select and type in our text. Let's spice it up by adding some animation. I'll just grab the zoom in animation and drop it on the timeline. Let's zoom in on the timeline to see what this does. We can see that the animation is represented by a yellow arrow with two points at the beginning and at the end. This represents the settings for the annotation at two points in time. Now that the playhead is at the beginning of the animation, let's set the scale to start at zero. This gives us an eye-catching annotation that jumps right out at us. If we want a smooth fade out, we simply grab it and drop it on the timeline. Next, let's take a look at some of the arrows and lines we can use for annotations. I'll go with the red arrow. It would be really cool if we could make this arrow shoot across the page and point at what we want the user to look at. We'll need a custom animation to do this. Once again, we simply grab it and drop it onto our timeline. Next, we need to position our playhead to the beginning of the animation and simply drag the arrow to the beginning position. If we start with the opacity at zero, we'll also get a nice fade in with our animation. The next annotations tab gives us a number of shapes and line drawings that we can also drag and drop onto our demo video. The fourth tab gives us a set of rectangular tints we can use for highlighting. The fifth tab is my personal favorite, animated line drawings. Let's go with a big smiley face for Camtasia. We just need to drag and drop and then scale. Position it just right. And then set the color and width. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Next up, screen flow. In ScreenFlow, you can create an annotation by clicking on the Annotations tab and then clicking on the plus button to add the annotation to your timeline. Notice how the annotation is inserted in front of the playhead. And notice how the mouse pointer has turned into crosshairs. This indicates that you can start to paint the annotations onto your screen. While these annotations are pretty basic, the ability to paint multiple lines and shapes onto the same annotation does make it flexible. Let's make a simple line drawing of the sun. I'll start with a circle, and then I'll draw an outer circle as a guide for the sun's rays. Notice how we can position each shape individually.
Now let's set the color to a nice yellow. And then we can draw our rays. Since this is a video element, we can add animation to it by clicking on the action button. The small yellow rectangle inside the annotation represents the animation. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the animation and set the opacity and scale to zero. Let's see what that looks like. We can add a rotating animation to make it a little more interesting. Clicking on our video action button will give us another animation rectangle on our timeline. Now I'll grab the rotation handle of the entire annotation and set the ending rotation angle. Oops, that was a little too fast. Let's slow this animation down by stretching out that animation rectangle over a larger range of the timeline. And let's add a nice fade out by animating the opacity to zero. To add a text annotation, first you click on the T tab and then the plus button. This puts a text box on top of your video and inserts a text video element onto your timeline. The settings allow you to control the font, font size, alignment, fill color, background color, and outline. Since the text annotation is also a video element, you can animate it by going to the video tab and clicking on the action button. This is represented by the video rectangle that has been added to our timeline inside our text annotation. Again, we use the playhead to adjust settings for the beginning of the animation and the end of the animation. Let's send that text box flying across the screen, spinning out of control. Scorecard! Camtasia takes round five. Round six, video effects. First up, Camtasia. When we select the video effects category, we get a list of effects which we can drag and drop onto our video on the timeline. Let's play around with our color adjustment settings, which appears on our video tab. To remove the effect, just X out the attributes. Let's see what the vice frame does we can make our screencast look like it's running on an actual device. There's a nice list of Apple devices to pick from. Next, let's look at freeze region. This can come in handy if something distracting happens on our screen during our screencast recording. Simply adjust the size of the rectangle of the area you would like to freeze. Then adjust the freeze region icon on your timeline to the point in time and the length in time you want the freeze to be. Let's see if we can freeze out the part of the demo where I highlighted this text. Let's try reflection. It gives a nice three-dimensional feel to our screencast. Sepia gives us that old-timey look. Clip speed allows us to either speed up or slow down a particular clip. This helps your screencast move along at a good clip, even though there may be slow processes or typing going on. We can colorize our clips by tinting them with our color of choice. And we can add a drop shadow to make our screen pop out.
glow will give us that otherworldly kind of feel. And remove color lets us do chroma key effects. It's nice that we can actually select the spyglass and pick the actual color we would like to remove. Next up, screen flow. The screen flow video effects can be found right on the video tab. Here you can add a reflection, add a shadow and make some adjustments, and do some basic color controls. We can fine tune saturation, brightness, and contrast. More advanced effects can be achieved by using the large array of video filters. The first filter is the chroma key, which allows us not only to select the color that we're removing, but has adjustments for white clip tolerance and angle, so we can fine tune this effect. Next, we have a large collection of distortion effects. I'll start with a bump distortion. We can see the center of this bump distortion in the upper left-hand corner. What's really cool is that we can animate this effect by clicking on the action button. Since the center point is in the upper left-hand corner at the beginning of the animation, let's move it to the opposite corner at the end of the animation. Let's see what that looks like. Very nice. Let's look at another one. There are like 10 different distortion effects to pick from. I'll try the whole distortion. Notice how I click on the plus button to make a symbol for the center of the distortion to appear on the screen so I can drag and drop it. This time, let's try to animate the movement of the center of the distortion and at the same time animate the radius of the distortion. Very cool. The Taurus lens distortion is another cool attention getter. There are eight different blurring effects to choose from. I'll start with a basic box blur. Again, we start an animation by clicking the action button. Set the length of the animation by adjusting the length of the animation rectangle. And then setting the values of the attributes for each end of the animation. Let's have some fun with the zoom blur. It's kind of like having your screencast jump into hyperspace. There are many stylized effects to set different moods and tones. The bloom gives you a glowing, soft focus feel. The gloom gives you a kind of comic book feel. And pixelate gives you a high-tech digital feel. Spotlight will draw your user's attention to a specific area on the screen. Next, there are advanced color adjustments that will allow you to fine-tune the exact look you're trying to get. Things like exposure adjustment and vibrance give you a large degree of control. Next, let's look at the many color effects that are available. Color Invert makes everything look like a photo negative. 
Color Monochrome allows you to set a color to set a particular mood. Sepia Tone for those old time screencasts. And the Vignette Effect to block out distractions and help people focus on a particular item. Animating this effect is a great way to gently lead your users from focusing on one part of the screen to another part of the screen. ScreenFlow really gives you a very impressive set of video effects. Scorecard! Round six goes to ScreenFlow!